Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about getting your body ready for fall and winter. I'm Lady Bounce. And I am Picket Fence. Today's Mindfulness Minute is called Hit a Local Hiking Trail. If you enjoy working up a sweat, especially in nature, go for a hike. If your workday is just too long and there's no way you could get a hike in in the evening before dinner, arrange the hike on a weekend. Get out early when the air is still cool and enjoy the fresh beginnings of a new day. Plan plan to hike an hour or two along a local scenic trail. Take plenty of water with you. If you love to take pictures and make notes about what you see, Also slip in your camera and your journal into your backpack. That way, if you see some breathtaking scenery or head off the path to explore the woods, you can document special discoveries along the way. You can also participate in an organized hike by the Sierra Club or some other local organization. Such hikes often guide you, you who can guide you, who can share insights as well as show you new trails. In addition, You can meet other trailblazers who share your interest in this new rugged outdoors. Word up. So the the reason I picked that one, because, you know, a lot of times as fall sets in, which I've said it before, probably this time last year, I usually hate the fall. I hate it. I hate the fall. Um, And last year I said that I'm going to try to enjoy fall more. So I'm going to try it again this year. I think uh, as soon as fall hit, which was September 22nd, it just felt like everything instantly got cold and everything instantly started going in slow motion. And I was like, it's got to be, it's just got to be me. And then I ran into our guest from last week and she said the same thing. She says, I feel like I am just moving into in slow motion in everything I do. So with that being said, I know that everybody usually um, waits for the new year to start getting in shape. So in part of in trying to enjoy the fall, I want to make it go at trying to get fit for the fall to stay active, even though the sun isn't charging this up like it usually does. Um, Try to, you know, just stay mobile and not get lethargic and just start sitting around eating donuts. (laughs) That's another, that's what the fall and winter is good for, just sitting around eating. (laughs) I was going to say, because wait a minute, I I was feeling slightly offended there because I like donuts. Yeah, but some things you like are not good for you. Donuts are probably the worst thing, one of the worst things you can put in your body. I mean, I don't know about that, partner. I've I've had some pretty bad things in my mouth. Uh, So (laughs) I have to say, if I had to pick one of those bad things I had in my mouth versus a donut, I'm taking a jelly donut every time. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass on the donuts for now. Okay. So in, in talking about this and, and, you know, you you spoke about feeling kind of, you know, lethargic and kind of out of it because fall and winter is coming. What are you doing so that you don't fall into that rut besides, you know, avoiding donuts, which I don't know why you would want to, you know, deny yourself God's precious fruity clouds. But, you know, go on. <laughs> fruity clouds. Well, one, because I hate being fat. I hate it with the passion. <laughs> Um, okay. Two, um, you know, in the last year, I've lost a little over forty pounds, and I don't want to pick it back up. You know, just being okay. lazy throughout the um, the fall and winter. Like I said, it makes you not want to do anything. So, one thing that I'm going to try to do is like the um, mindfulness minister said is I'm going to like why it's still kind of okay with weather wise, and I don't have time to do it during the week. You know, maybe on uh, weekend afternoon, Saturday afternoon, or Sunday morning, Sunday, you know, check out some of the local parks and some of the hiking trails, you know, just to stay mobile trails. and something that would be, uh, I guess, adventurous, you know, it won't just be like going to the gym because I'm not a gym person either. I'm not going to make a commitment to go to uh, 
some local gym and pay a monthly fee, a monthly fee. And, and and then I take advantage of going to the gym and just wasting money, you know, going and hitting the trail or something like that is something you can do for free. Mm, okay. So you talked about where you're, what you're doing physically. What are you doing for your mind to keep your mind state, you know, from getting in that doom and gloom kind of, you know, they, they, you know, they call it seasonal, what is it? It's depression. Like, it's sad. It's, seasonal yeah, depression. Seasonal depression. Yeah. So uh, what are you doing um, to well, keep I've, your mind sharp? Well, one thing is I, I just um, started reading a couple of books that I've had on Kindle for a long time. And one of them is The Power of the Mind and the Spirit. Um, and so just trying to read stuff like that to keep the mind and the spirit strong which will help motivate the body. It's, uh, talks, this book talks about the conscious and the subconscious. Um, the conscious is your everyday um, things that you do uh, as far as what you observe, what you, uh, your work or the th things that you eat or things you watch and stuff like that. And the conscious feeds the subconscious. The subconscious is what actually controls the organs you know how they talk about involuntary muscles and things like that like the, the heart and the internal organs but actually those have a mind and they're used controlled by the subconscious so what this book is really trying to get you to do is engage the conscious and subconscious together um it's sort of like a lot of people seen the movie the, the secret or read the book the secret this book is more in depth version of that and and really talks about how the conscious and subconscious um connect you to spirit and the the you know and the source that some will call or some may say god wow um so and reading books god? like that um ralph you know, waldorf i'll put it in the show notes but i think it's ralph waldorf um because it's on my phone so i can't see what it is but um um, but yeah, it's called the mind Ralph spirit. Waldo Emerson. Nah, I, I'm not sure. Like I said, I'll put it in the show notes because yeah, I got a physical copy of it. Uh, yeah, I, I'll make sure they in the show notes for anybody who wants to check that. I'm actually going to be ordering a physical copy because I prefer physical books over reading them on my phone. That's why it's been just sitting there on my phone. Right. Um, but yeah, it's you know it's an adult book so far, and it's it's not a, a big book, um, and it, like I said, it really talks about making that connection between the conscious and the subconscious, and all the way back to the source. Hmm. So just trying to get okay. books like that. I have a couple other books that I haven't started reading, but that's one thing that I plan on doing, as long with being fit for fall, is programming the mind to be fit. Because if the mind is fit, it is easy for the body to follow. Because if your mind right. is targeted on being a, in, in a wholeness, then your mind will gear the body to like, yo, we need to do this. You know, we need to be conscious of what we're eating. Because not only do you have to do some physical work, but what, what you eat is important too. So I'm just trying not to... Um, you know, fall into bad food habits like the, the like I said, the fall and the winter. And I think that's part of um, that's probably encoded us as, as being, you know, animals. We know that usually um, the winter is hard, you know, before we had civilization, when we were just out in the open, you know, you had to pack on those fatty foods to have the fat, you know, to keep you warm and secure throughout the winter. Um, but now that we're in, in civilization, you don't have to do that. You can still eat light because you're going to go into a, a house that has heating if you're fortunate enough to have that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and we're, wearing, we're that... wearing clothes now. <laughs> we're wearing clothes now. We're wearing but clothes part now. of that is, it, it is that, you know, packing on, you know, you pack on the pounds for the winter because you do kind of go into a, a hibernative, you know, kind of state. Because mm -hmm. during the winter, aside from, you know, essential chip trips to, you know, the grocery store 
or going to work, which we all have to do, you really tend to not go out often. So it is it is that mindset that it's winter, I'm supposed to be asleep or hibernating and tucked away with, you know, cozy foods or cozy comforts and everything. So that that is something about um, kind of shifting your mindset when it comes to the following the winter months to not let that you know, not let that thought come in and like, oh, I got to pack on a hundred pounds. Cause you know, in the winter time too, is when we have the two biggest holidays, which are mm -hmm. food related holidays. I mean, the holidays are basically centered around food. Thanksgiving, especially mm -hmm. is centered around food. And typically it's centered around those comfort foods that soul food. And even if you're, you know, if you're vegan, you're still those comforting vegan foods, you know, which are the ones mm -hmm. that tend to be a little less healthy for you, but they feel good, you know, going down and they release those endorphins and the dopamine in your brain, those feel good chemicals to say, ah, I'm satisfied and now I can take a nap or now, you know, I'm satisfied. I can go sit on the couch and, and binge watch, you know, mm -hmm. my favorite show or whatever. So it's, and, and it's like you said, important. though. That's exactly what usually happens. You um, you you get. I remember my family used to get together, and, and everybody was involved with the cooking. Even the kids. We used to make the uh, toast. I'm talking about hundreds of pieces of toast for um the dressing, and you know everybody was a part. Somebody was uh, my um my mother used to make like a lemon ice cream thing and a pound cake. And I had an aunt that made a sweet potato pie and fried mushrooms. And somebody, my uncle was making a turkey. Uh, somebody else was making a ham, all that stuff. Like you said, devil. I mean, you could go on and on about those spreads. And most of that stuff is horrible for your body. But like you said, it's, it's, uh, it was more about the family getting together and the time, but you're eating all that. And like you said, usually what you do afterwards, you fall asleep on the couch with the itis, fall asleep with the TV watching you, you know, um, and those holidays are right back to back. They're uh, a, a month apart from each other. And uh, you have back to back binge food binge sessions. And then, you know, um, like I said, you know, th that time, you don't want to be out and about. Uh, there's no more walking um, amongst festivals and stuff like that. Like I said, you really don't want to go anywhere in the winter. We, we, we stay posted up once it gets cold. We want to be out there driving and stuff like that. I can't wait to the day that we become snowbirds. So that, cause I don't never want to, I don't think that I would want to move somewhere besides where we're at, but I would like to be able to visit somewhere warm when it gets cold. So, and that, that was, you know, bringing me to my next point that, that it's important during this time to not overindulge. It, it is important to make sure that we're having those good, feel good foods in moderation, which I know, of course, is always easier said than done. Because if you see five pieces of pie, you're going to eat two because it's just sitting there and it's asking for it. But maybe, you know, have one piece and go take a walk, you know, walk around the block four times and then maybe come back and have that second piece. You know, so even though, you know, you are going to indulge, it's not, you know, not to overindulge and it's sneaking maybe a little exercise here and there. Don't go right to the couch afterwards. The, um, the number one food for both of these holidays is turkey and turkey contains tryptophan tryptophan is what tryptophan is what makes you sleepy after you eat that big meal so it's not just that you ate a big meal it's that meat specifically has this chemical that induces sleep that is what it's for that is its only purpose so when we're when we're talking about you know not overindulging you know maybe don't have that second plate or that third plate or maybe take you home and let that be the midnight snack and then um i know this is probably gonna mess up a lot of people but throw out those leftovers after like a week or two you shouldn't still be eating <laughs> thanksgiving foods going into christmas you know we don't no. have to eat the whole turkey we don't have to eat all of the food um 
and I know that's gonna mess up some people's minds. It's gonna, <laughs> I wasn't raised that way, and we eat the turkey and we make the turkey soup and turkey sandwiches and all this other stuff. Then you end up sounding like Bubba Gump when he was talking about the shrimp and all the ways you can make it. <laughs> we don't have to do that, okay? I know, no, we I'm don't. sorry. We don't. We definitely don't. I know. I know. <laughs> I done messed up some people. Probably lost my black card and everything. But yeah, we shouldn't be eating Thanksgiving going into Christmas. And mm. then maybe, um, maybe switch up your meal. Maybe don't have the traditional, you know, Thanksgiving meal or the traditional Christmas meal. You know, in our house, we always eat non-traditional. We've had, you know, yeah. Christmases where we've had fried fish and potatoes and onions, and people are like. That's what you ate. Where's the ham? Yeah. Where's the turkey? Like, yeah, not this time. So it's okay to even do that. I remember one year we had a seafood boil for Thanksgiving. Like, mm -hmm. it, you know, so it, it's okay to, to switch it up, to not overindulge, throw out the leftovers. Yeah, start a new tradition. Yeah, start let's, something new. Let's start eating healthy. Let's make that the tradition. You know, um, okay. I think that especially when you know you're coming of age like we are it's really really important to eat healthy all the time you know um so we're not like saying uh, oh mm, 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 the 48 kicking in the 48. <laughs> oh my aches and pains oh my goodness you know i you know i I feel like this I got a <laughs> yeah and I'm already starting to feel that and I don't want to feel that I want to be uh a fine piece of machinery you know what i okay. mean that's 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 good self-care is making sure that you're still able to be a fine piece of machinery uh, uh a strong vessel for this um spirit that dwells within you hmm. that's a that's a different way to look at it yeah and, you know, and i'm sure not a lot of people you know have thought about that perspective you know we think about doing what feels good in the moment and we don't always mm -hmm. think about the long-term effects of of the things we do that feel good in the moment but when you think of your body like a machine or like a car then you do tend to take better care of it i mean you're not gonna if your car takes premium gas you're not gonna put regular unleaded in it and think that your car is gonna drive around you know and function the way it should or you're not gonna put 10w30 oil in your car if it really takes 5w30 so if you think of your body and your mind like a car or like a piece of machinery then yeah you are going to keep doing those things that keep it running smoothly because we know what the alternative of it not running smoothly feels like and we know that we don't like that feeling you get up and your body is snapping and crackling and popping and you can't move mm -hmm. this or you got a new ailment every single day then we know that yeah. that doesn't feel good, yeah. but old habit, you know, old habits are hard to break. It's hard to break that exactly. habit of, you know, not, you know, getting so drunk that you're feeling it for three or four days later. You know, we're not 19 anymore. You can't drink like that. You can't go that hard anymore. You really have to think about, you know, keeping your body in in the best shape possible. And that's not to say that you have to be you know, super skinny, a size two or something like that. But you need to be healthy for your height. You need to be healthy for your blood type. You know, all of those things. So maybe go to your, your doctor and get a wellness, have a wellness appointment where they just check all of those things. And then they can even tell you, you know, these are the kinds of foods you should be eating based on your blood type. Or these are the kinds of things that you should be doing based on your body structure. And can we please put to rest... I'm big boned. There's no, There's such, no thing. such thing. Can Let's we stop, stop saying that when we're fat? Yeah, can we can we stop that? Let's just yeah. you're not big let's, boned. Let's, you got for God's sake, stop it. On your bones. <laughs> <laughs> for God's yeah, sake, stop yeah. it. Stop. Yeah, I know. That's yeah, yeah. I'm like, I know I'm making I'm making people real mad with this episode, but I hate when people say that. Well, I'm big boned because of my bone structure, I carry more weight. No, that's that's not no. true. You carry more weight because no. you're not doing anything to combat the weight that you're carrying. Yeah, I and, mean, and, and I'm guilty. I'm, a, you know, I'm chunky. Yeah, and 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 say, and, I, and let's not act like it's uh, something easy. It's very, very hard. 
it can be very, very hard. Um, and that's yeah. why you have to um, start with the mind, reprogramming your, the way you think. Um, and then mm -hmm. it's you can make those physical decisions after the mind is really geared to it. But you have to really, really, you have to apply pressure to yourself. And, and, and yeah. sometimes that could be hard. Nobody wants to be pressurized. So, right. you know, that can be, yeah, that can be really, really difficult, but you um, have to weigh that out with what you were just saying earlier about you start feeling those aches and pains in the morning. He's just supposed to got recharged. <laughs> right. You wake up in pain. So when you weigh that out, it kind of helps you, um, that gives, should give you a little motivation to start moving towards the um, being able to reprogram your mind. And I think it's, we've said on the show a lot of times that it's time that we start reprogramming the mind. And that's another thing with being fit in the fall. Not only do I want to um, keep mental fitness and physical fitness, make those uh, a, a habit and a, and a always continuing goal, but I also want to get financially fit. I mean, we, we've we got a kid in college now that's going to need our financial support. Um, and eventually we will be too old to work. And I want to make sure that we're secure. So this is the last weekend of splurging for me, just splurging. Not, not, that's not to say that we won't go out and have a good time, but just like really have to watch them pennies. You know, I'm, um, I'm, be, I'm sneaking a water bottle in the club with me. Cause they be charging too much for them drinks. They <laughs> 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 be charging too. Much. I, so we we still gonna see some nice shows and and support our artist friends, but I, I'm packing a flask, man. Cause sometimes what you pay for a uh, flask. Yeah, I got two in the kitchen. Why oh, am I not man. using those to my advantage? Cause sometimes you go out and you could get a whole bottle for what they charge for one drink sometimes. And it'd be retarded, man. It'd be ridiculous, man. I'm flasking You're it. Like, I, th I think when the last time that we went out um, to a show, we paid $8 and a margarita was like this big. Yeah, was, it was a like, simple margarita. It was like a party cup. Yeah, it was, it was a party it cup. It wasn't even a party cup. It was a child's cup. It was yeah, the I, mean, child. I guess what I mean, like a child party cup. <laughs> yeah, it was like and the, was the cup you get the kids. Like, you don't need too much to drink. You drink all that, you ain't going to eat your food. Right, Man. or you're going to have to go pee. <laughs> the, the, the cup was the size of the lime wedge. The, the, the lime wedge was sticking up out of the cup from the bottom of the cup. <laughs> get out of here with that, <laughs> Yeah, that was that was pretty that was pretty awful. Okay, yeah. so what are we doing this week? What's our self care assignment? So our self care assignment this week is to make a fit for fall plan. Plan out what you want to do. It could be physical fitness. It could just be eating better. You know, we all got to take baby steps before we can make that big jump. Um, or if it's financial fitness that you want this fall, sit down and make a plan for your fall fitness. That's this week's self-care assignment. Now, before we get out of here, you know we got to get into my favorite part of the show. Doom, 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 doom. Brain science, 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 science. All right, so we've been talking about getting physically and mentally fit for fall and for winter. So I'm going to talk to you about how to winter-proof your brain. From diet to exercise, we're going to help you discover simple lifestyle changes that will help you survive a cold winter. Until recently, we thought of our genes as a fixed destiny, but the emerging science of epignatics is proving that everything from diet to exercise habits and close relationships can alter our DNA, changing the heritable traits that get passed down to future generations. And at the same time, these environmental factors are shaping our brains. Wow. So here are some simple things you can do to winterproof your brain. Resist comfort drinking. <gasps> no. It's no coincidence that the further north you go, the more drinking becomes a problem. The drawing in of winter has a similar effect. This, which is bad news for our brains. Even moderate drinking, seven drinks a week, 
which is almost like one drink a day, has been linked with cognitive decline and impaired memory recall over time. The relatively low alcohol consumption in London, for example, compared with the rest of the country, could also be a reflection of the fact that there's plenty to do in their city. So the more things that you have to do around you, the less you're drinking, according to uh, this most recent study. Next up, let's prioritize, prioritize our physical health. That could be going to the gym or sneaking a walk in at lunch after work or, you know, in the evenings after dinner. And no one says that you have to go walk a marathon. Just a couple of blocks is enough to get that heart rate pumping and moving. And it really does clear your lungs as you're breathing in and out fresh air. If you're breathing in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth, you're cleaning your lungs and your nasal passages, which in this time of year with sinus infections running rampant, that's exactly what you need is really good breathing. Um, don't carb load. Watch how much, you know, bread and potatoes and those white starchy foods that you eat during this time of year. Those are those things that they do feel good. They do release those feel good chemicals in your brain, but it also puts those not feeling so good pounds on your hips. So we want to be mindful of, you know, those refined foods, potatoes, breads, white sugars, you know, things of that nature, right? So we also want to boost our social time. So we talked about that when it talked about drinking and the more activities that you do with friends, especially can help curb some of those bad habits around you. For example, if you're going out, you know, with your friends and you're having a good time, you may not feel the need to drink or you may not feel the urge to overindulge in, in fatty foods because you're so busy laughing and having a good time that those things are just not a part of the prioritized plan when it comes to social gatherings. And mm -hmm. if you hang out with, with friends who are healthier, you know, you are, we always have that one. I wrote this note because I have one of these. We all have that one friend that will go out to a restaurant and order a salad. Go out with that friend. Because that friend is going to order a salad. You're going to look at that salad. You're going to be like, oh my God, that's such a good looking salad. I think instead of having a steak, I'm going to have a salad too. So sometimes our friends can influence our healthier habits. So hang out with friends that influence your healthier habits. Now, that's not to say you can't go hang out with your good, good girlfriends or your good time friends, but you want to try to spend more time with those friends of yours that have healthy habits, that have healthy coping mechanisms for the problems that are arise in life. So they're not just drinking their life away and having encouraging you to drink your life away or they're eating all types of bad foods and then they're encouraging you to eat bad food too when you know that that's not really you know what you want to do but you do it because of you get that you know hanging out with friends it's not necessarily peer pressure but it is peer pressure in the sense that if you and your friend are going out you're going to do what your friend is doing or your friend is going to do what you're doing so be good influencers of each other when it comes to things like that wow and if you do these things, wait, let me, with this last line, then you too will have a healthier way of coping with the winter blues and that will stave off that seasonal depression that we were talking about earlier. Or, I love it. That's, that sounds dope. Sounds real dope. Yeah. The word up is best. Especially like word, word up. up. Word up. Okay, For so real, real quick, though, we got like a minute left. What's one thing you're going to do starting tomorrow to get your body ready for fall? Just one thing. Uh, Shout out to the family in New York, TK. I'm going to have a salad a day. Every day I'm going to, one of my meals is going to be a salad. And I got that idea. She usually does that close to like uh, her birthday, like March, April. Her birthday is in April, same as mine. Um, shout out to the Tauruses. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have a salad every day. What say you? Every day. Um, I'm going to increase my water intake. I'm mm, gonna go from one, one, the one to two bottles a day that I've been having to at least three bottles a day. Okay, that's a good one. That's a real good one. I think I might do that too. You fancy. <laughs> fancy. <laughs> but word up. That's our show for this week. You know you can find us wherever you find your favorite podcast. Please like the page on Facebook. Leave a comment. 
share the self-care assignment. Let's 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 help each other out here. Fly with us. That let's fly with us. So, you know, share those self-care assignments every day. That doesn't mean you have to do those self-care assignments every day, but at least share them. Maybe one hits you today and the one tomorrow might not, but maybe the one tomorrow will hit one of your friends. So make sure you share those self-care assignments on your page. Word up. It's your boy, Pick Your Fence. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. We out of here. Peace. Peace. Peace.